this so you know this talk of anxiety right mm-hmm. and when people talk about anxiety yeah. it's the only time i can relate to anxiety is like when i'm even even now like when i'm about to finish something like when i like let's say there's a task at hand and like i start it i'm like like i gotta get it done like i gotta get it done so like what used to happen to me was when i was in, the, in elementary school uh-huh. I'll be writing a paper or whatever, right? And as I'm writing, like, when I'm about to get to that last sentence, I was so anxious to get there. That's the only time I felt, like, that anxiety kick in, mm-hmm. right? And so now that you mentioned that, I'm thinking, well, us, because I used to get the exact same thing. Go kneel down, and there'll be times where you just got to wait. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you're waiting. Mm-hmm. You don't know how much time is passing by. You're praying to God. I'll be praying to God. I'll be like, please, God, don't let this person hit me. Please, 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 don't let my mom hit me. Hopefully they could laugh. Like, Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, like, you, like, you be praying and, like, expecting for these yeah. people to, like, but nah, bro, the wrath of God comes with the belt, as a matter of fact. Right on time, too. So think about it. Like, you're you're on your knees, which is, like, already abuse yeah, yeah. in itself. <laughs> That's mental abuse, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, think about it. Go get on your knees. And you don't even know how long you have yeah, until you're about to get the, the rapture. This is worse than the rapture. Like, it you know is. when people be saying, Jesus coming soon? You don't know when exactly. he's coming. Exactly. No, you know what it is about the rapture, too? Is that, like, with the rapture, you still feel like you have a chance. Yeah. Because even after it happens, it's like, all right, but I guess if I turn my life to God, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> with the whooping, <laughs> every, you don't got no rowdy. Every <laughs> Christian looking at you sideways, right now. they give you that like, Camilla look. Listen, listen, listen. It's the truth. I know y'all thought about it. They thought about it. They know they thought it's like you know what if i stay though it's like if i get caught at the st- club i still technically yo, have a chance i feel like everybody every christian has a contingency plan you know like like you yo, want you want it yeah, right no, now no, right. listen you want to like go ahead and like praise god and you want to go ahead and be in that life in that realm you want to but you know like there's like you know th- these little t- you know what it is too and i'll tell you what this I feel like this is the thought process of people that aren't brought up in the church from a young age. You get what I'm saying? Because I feel like once you grow up and you experience life like outside of church, like like out, and away from God, right? Mm-hmm. You experience like you know like the, like the dumb stuff, you know, like like the the lustfulness, the women, the cars, whatever whatever it is that yeah. you like. You get me? When you come back to the church, you almost feel like oh, I gotta give up like some of these mm-hmm. things, and so. I feel like some people have these contingency plans in their head. I feel like, listen, if I thought about it, I'm not the one that's thought about that. <laughs> now, I'm not saying, I, listen, I just thought about this right now. I swear to y'all, this just came to me right now because I'm like, yo, if you think about it, if the rapture comes, you still got a second chance, bro. Like, you really do. Even if you have to die for it, you still have yeah. a second chance. But, like... I die for mine. But, bro, <laughs> listen, bro. This is no joke, man. This is no joke. Yeah, yeah, man. So... What was that? Oh, right, right. So, you know, I feel like that's why people have the contingency plans because it's like, you know you're going to mess up. And if you get left in the rapture, that's really your only choice. Like, realistically, whether you want to... I feel like God put that... It's like a contract. Like, God left in the fine print. Like, look, bro, you got one more chance, bro. I'm going to give you one... You actually got to think... Let's talk about that for a minute, bro. Let's talk about how good God is for a minute, hey, right? I could, I could get no, a praise break going. going. Let's, praise let's talk about how good God is for a minute, bro. Why is it, right, that even... Like, okay, so... You're told, right, that no matter, like, what, because we're sinners, God will always forgive you, right? As long as you go to him, you know, and you repent, mm-hmm. you know, with open with an open heart, right? So you already have that those chances, which are, like, basically unlimited, right? Yeah. You also have the rapture coming, right, which is, like, you know, when yeah. Jesus comes and, or not when he comes, but it's, like, you know, when all the people that have served God mm-hmm. will disappear in the blink of an eye, boom, right, gone. You're not going to know what happens, stuff goes crazy. If you stayed and you are recognizing what's happening in Mm -hmm. the world, you're going to realize, like, okay, so this just happened. So you literally have one more chance to, like... So what is it, right? How we talk... I guess to modernize things, right? You know, the chip implants, right? Mm -hmm. That means you're going to be... That's the mark of the beast, and you're going to be on that side. And if you decide not to take it, you're probably going to give up your life. And that's fine, because, I mean, I'm be real tired. You better... you Just die, my nigga. Just... (laughs) Yeah, trust me. Just take it. Are you better off? Take it. Trust me. You're going to be way better off. And so... Why so many chances? I I think honestly, uh, I love how you phrased it because if you hear most people who don't understand what we believe in, mm-hmm. they say, "Oh, if God is good, then how come He sends you to hell?" Right, right. But you give the other side of the coin. How come God gives you so many chances? Yeah, you know. And based on the Bible, right? The Bible says that He doesn't want anyone to die. He wants everybody to come to repentance. And I, and I think people misunderstand. Um, Christianity and it's Christians' faults, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because we don't understand the Bible. So when we talk about the Bible, we're saying, oh, but the Bible says this, but the Bible doesn't actually say that. That's what you interpret it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, even the idea of the word repentance. People say, repentance means saying sorry. No. The word repentance comes from a Greek word, metanoia, which means a change of mind, a change of heart, 
a change of ways. Okay, okay. Slow that down for me again. Run that the word repentance comes from, you said a Greek word? Yeah, called metanoia. Metanoia. Uh -huh. That means? Because meta is transformation, right? Yeah. The the metamorphosis, meta -human. meta human, right? Uh -huh. It's someone who's changing. And meta noia. So, yeah, noia. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's a new way of, of seeing things, a new way of walking, it's a new heart, like this kind of, mm -hmm. right? it's, a, it's a shift. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and so wh when you're saying repentance, essentially what you're saying is, I was wrong. That means God is right. I was living my way in what I thought was right. Now I know that it, he has a different way of looking at things. And right. I agree with his way, not my way. Mm, right? Gotcha. Because I, I think a lot of times we think we're wiser than we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so God gives you that chance of saying, hey, look, I, I, I still want the best for you, even if it takes you a long time to realize that. But you could avoid a bunch of headaches if, if you cho yeah, just chose just my way. Gotcha. Like, like, we know when your mom or your dad tell you, like, hey, don't do this. Yeah. Sometimes they don't give you a reason. But if you were mature enough in that moment, like if you, you if I went to go back to what my parents you told me don't do this, yeah. I would go and tell my my younger self be like, hey, they know why they say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And gotcha. I think the same thing happens with God and and, and Christians. It's like you know you realize, man, I I, I kind of get what guy is saying. Don't do this or don't mm -hmm. do that or don't do it this way. You know, right? Um, because I I think he does want the best for us. Um, we just have a hard time understanding that maybe we don't know it all, and it bothers yeah. us that. That somebody else could have a better interest for me than I do. Right. I guess, yeah. And, you know, even on that, I guess that, that's the thing that kills us at the end of the day is just the not knowing, right? Like, mm -hmm. even when we talk about death, yeah. right? And when we talk about God and going to heaven or hell, the hardest thing is, like, how, how can you believe in something that you don't see mm -hmm. or you don't know, you don't have no proof of, right? And it's like, because obviously, right, like, you know, this whole life is based on faith. Yeah. You know I mean, that's, that's yeah. what it is. The whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing is based on faith. But... The thing that I feel like kills people the most is that part. It's just that you just don't know. And that's what, realistically, even, like, outside of, like, just talking about God, I mean, just death in general scares death, people, yeah, period. Like, yeah. even if you're a Christian, a lot of people, I mean, there's, don't get me wrong, there's Christians that are, like, they're prepared to die because they're like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm about to go see God. And like, you know, I feel like that level of faith is a very difficult level to achieve. Yeah. You get me? Like, to really get to that point where you're, like, where you, like, for example, like, let's say, you know, God forbid, right? Like, somebody's like, yo, you're about to die from in one week from cancer. You have cancer, you have one week to live. Some people really look at that and be like, okay, that's fine. Like, you know, this is the time that God gave me here and I'm about to go see my, my dad. You get me? Like, yeah. And then there's other people are like, oh my God, you know, you panic, right? Like, I haven't done enough or whatever. Right, and, and that's yeah. just it though. It's like the not knowing part. Yeah. Like you just don't know what's going to happen, you know? And I grew up in church and I experienced that all the time. I used to yeah. be like, dang, you know, what if I die? What if I die? And, and honestly, I grew up with fear because I think that's what happens when, when you're not understanding the way God sees things, right? And I'm saying that we're going to understand everything he does. but Or the way the word was meant to be given, which is in love. Yeah. Um, You create fear in others and in yourself. Mm. So I would repent every night. I would say, Jesus, forgive me because if you come tonight in the rapture, because yeah, you know, they yeah. tell you like a thief in the, the thief night. In the night yeah. So you think he's coming at night, so I would repent every night. Yeah. I repent. Because I'm, I was like, yeah. man, God, if you come tonight, I don't want to wake up tomorrow and like be the only one here. What if my yeah, brother's yeah. Like, gone? Everybody's gone. You know, and so that was fear, but that was it was a lack of understanding what, what repentance really meant and what being with Jesus meant. And and I'm sorry to even like break that up. Have you ever had moments where you will wake up and the house is alone and you'll think all the right? time that happened to me all the time too. But you will wake up, nobody's home, nobody told you where anybody's even. You're like, did the rapture happen? You will go outside, nobody's outside. Yeah, you're like. Bro. Huh. And then your parents come back later from the supermarket. Yeah, you're like, oh, oh you're like, oh. okay, okay, like you're good, you're good. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but uh, I I think um, there, there's fear involved in that, right? Because this is the idea is I don't have to surrender anything, like like in the sense of I'm not losing things for choosing God, right? Yeah. I'm not losing things for because what I'm losing doesn't compare to what I'm gaining. Mm. Is that that's yeah. the that's the problem? We, we like yes. for example, look. Somebody who doesn't understand how wonderful relationships are, yeah. right? Says, bro, I can't lose my my like singleness. my singleness. I can't yes. lose my independence. Yes. And and then when you when you fall in love with somebody, when you have somebody, you don't say you're losing that. You say, yo, I gained something so much better. Yes. Because yes. the person who doesn't understand sees what he's losing. The person who does sees what he's gaining. Mm. And Ooh, that's in that's everything. That's in everything. Like and now, bro, I, I've been telling people all the time, I'm ready to die. Yeah. And, and and the better the, the sooner the better because I got bills to pay. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. I, if I go to heaven, I don't got to worry yeah. about credit score. Yeah. But and then some people are like, but what if heaven's not real? Look, but if heaven isn't real, I still want to look at my life and think I lived a good life that made impact on other people positively. Right. Like the, the thing about love Christianity is that mm. aside from the leap of faith that I take in, in believing that Jesus is so good to me, mm -hmm. is that you know the Bible teaches kindness, love, mercy, forgiveness, right? Yeah. Understanding, wisdom. These are things that are would be great even without a savior. Yeah. 
Like if, if I told you, man, let's just promote love and peace. That's what everybody wants anyways. Yeah. Let's promote justice. That's what everybody still wants anyways. Mm -hmm. Let's promote equality. That's what the Bible wants anyways. Yes. You know what I mean? So yes. like all of these themes that are prevalent in scripture are things we all yearn for anyways. anyways the yeah. only struggle we have is that God has a different definition than we do. Yeah. And his yeah. definition is actually harder to reach. Mm -hmm. Then, then ultimately, that this is where Christians come in, right? And they say, we can't reach that. So Jesus came to reach us. Mm. So if he doesn't exist, I still want to live a life that protected people, that loved people, that yeah. gave to people. But if he does, I want to live that life to the one day I can live with him forever. Mm. And that's a gamble I'm willing to live with. Yeah. I, I don't feel like I miss, I'm going to miss on some things. No, yeah. I'm good. That was, yeah. It was a gamble I'm and, good with. And you know, that, that's a very good point because I feel like when we talk about missing out on things, it's never really about like, like, oh, we can't get a nice car, right? Or we can't have a nice house because we're Christian. Mm -hmm. That That's not what we're talking you about. You can have a Lambo. You can afford to go yes, get it. Yes, yes. I feel like what a lot of people talk about, like, I don't want to miss out is like the doing whatever you want to do part. Mm -hmm. You get me? Like, and I feel like that's the part that gets us in trouble the most, right? So like the doing whatever you want part could be, could even come down to like, so something as simple as from cursing all the way to like, you wanting to be like at a club, yeah, or, like exactly. you wanting to be like, you know, yeah. turning up, whatever, right? Whatever. Yeah. Right. You know, those things you learn very quickly, whether you experience them or not, that they fade away just as fast as they come. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? As fast as you're in there, like, you know, you're partying and stuff, you realize, like, damn, like, like, you know, think about it, right? Like, think about it, you go to a party, right? Or you go to any club or any event or something like that, right? A lot of times, like, you kind of want more. You get mm -hmm. me? It's like you don't really have enough until, like, you don't either been too intoxicated that your body just blacks out. You get me? Or most of the time, it's like you, you go to one spot, right? Like, mm -hmm. what you see often here is like, okay, you meet up at one spot, you chill here, then you jump to another spot, you chill here, and then you're in Miami, right? So Miami, before the pandemic, was like, yo, you can meet up at here, boom, then go here, boom, mm -hmm. then here, boom, and, like, your night will never end. You Ever. get what I'm saying? And yeah. so these things right that you continue to do continue to do, continue to do that you feel like oh i can no longer do it whatever those things honestly don't have like much yeah. weight or meaning to them anyways you know I mean? it's really just us wanting to do whatever the hell we want yeah. you know I me mean? like that's really what it is right like I, I guess it's like that freedom that we have in our minds mm -hmm. you get know I me mean? but realistically like no matter what though you really look at it either way you want to look at it you know like when you walk that path right like you just had to walk a path of faith Right, because mm -hmm. let's just call it yeah. that. Right, I don't want to say God and stuff like that. Just like you, you start to walk mm -hmm. that path of faith. You start to realize that the things that you like didn't even think about doing, and you start to do, bring so much fullness to mm -hmm. you. Like they start to yep. fulfill you way more than you mm -hmm. wandering in the world, yep. just like trying to see, like, okay, will this make me feel good? Would that make me yeah. feel good? And you start to try things that make you feel good, and you start to realize, like, maybe they make you feel good for a little bit, Temporary. but it fades yeah. away. Mm -hmm. You get me? Even like, like, like one thing that I could, like, I guess, like, even like looking at it now, right? So, like, you know, I've been a big preacher, like, oh, I'm gonna be single forever. This, that, and the third, right? It's like you kind of get to a point, right? Where, like, whether you mature or not, I just feel like, yo, how many girls can you sleep around with until it gets old? You get me? Mm -hmm. How many clubs and how many drinks can you have tried and been to before it gets yeah, old? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, how many of these things that we, we spend so much time and energy on, like, how, how long until it gets old and mm -hmm. boring and repetitive? Yeah. You get me? And, again, you could combat that with everything. You combat that with your regular job. You combat that with going to church. Yeah. I get it. You get me? So there's there's both arguments going back and forth. There's some people that are 40, 50 years old, and they still party, and they're having the best time of their mm -hmm. life. And I understand that there's different circumstances for different people. You get me? But I feel like in the broad and in the general, you see it a lot. In your 20s, what do people do? They party, mm -hmm. they make mistakes, you mess up your credit, you do X, Y, and Z. In your 30s, you're living your entire life trying to fix all the mistakes that you made in your 20s. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because you realize, well, those aren't the things that I want to yeah, do. I don't want to be partying all fleeting. the time. Yeah, they exactly, because it goes away. And so with, with that, where's my phone? Because um, we're actually on the literally on the perfect topic, so you can probably ask this question. So I put up a thing today. Somebody asked, how to prove to a unbeliever, I guess it's a non-believer, the experience with Christ. So you kind of read the question a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, you don't. I, well, I can't. I can't. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation with, with Fatima and Njori the other day. Mm -hmm. And I was telling that to me, Jesus is like coffee and wine. Okay. You can't, you can't explain to somebody why coffee is amazing you can explain to somebody why wine is amazing you can explain to somebody why jesus is amazing because mm. it's it, it, it it's like I, I i give you this idea and you're like no but i've seen people do it for this and i've seen people do it for that right. people do it to stay awake people do it to get drunk people do it to this and that and it's like it's the same thing with jesus and religion people like oh but G people use jesus to excuse wars and this. 
and and it's like you you can't understand it because it, it's like for example if i went if we went up to me and you were like bro my girl is the perfect girl mm-hmm. and i'll be like sure you yeah. know and and i wouldn't be able to quantify that statement unless i was with your girl and dated your girl right like right? you had that s- that experience. experience right right because no i can't explain to anybody my experience with jesus mm-hmm. i can testify to you and tell you that he's good and and that he's worth testing and trying yeah. the same way i make you with coffee even though sometimes you're like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but at least you were able to appreciate some of the things in it yeah, yeah. you know for what sure, i mean for sure and, and if, if you had more experiences with it you, you understood a little deeper you dug a little right. deeper i guarantee you would probably be like okay this is pretty cool yeah, yeah, yeah. you know gotcha. just like i always tell people no one likes wine the first sense. time they try wine a lot of people don't. That's true. Uh, I, Especially I've, red wine. I, I've, I've ever, I, like, honestly, if you the person that tells me, no, no, Chris, I had a cab or, or I had a Merlot in my belt and it was, like, the most wonderful thing in the world, I'm going to call you a liar. Maybe yeah. you weren't true, but to me, you're a liar. You're, gotcha. Yep. Because all you taste at first is bitter until you learn to appreciate why something is dry. Your why palate something, yeah, like, gets you know, why you can, you can taste notes of this and notes of that. Mm-hmm. With Jesus, the first thing people usually taste are Christians, not Christ. Mm, and so if you oh. had if you had if you've had good Christians around you, then you're intrigued and you're like, okay, maybe this may be f- fire. I might I might try to give it a try. Yeah. But if you've had some bad Christians around you, you've only expecting bitterness from Christ. Yeah. You're expecting religion. You're expecting uh you know being tied down, being forced to act a certain way. Yeah. A- and so I don't ever want to explain Jesus to people. I want to show them why he's worth trying. Yeah. For sure. And then I let you decide after. But I know. I know yeah. that once you ha- you try the real Jesus, not the white people, blonde, green-eyed Jesus. I'm, I'm talking about the Mediterranean, died on the cross, resurrected on the third day, Jesus. That Jesus, yeah. I, I guarantee you ain't going back. Yeah, That's my guarantee. And, you know, ev- even to add on to right to that experience part, you got to think about it. Like, Because it's going to blend in the savior, the saving part that we're talking about at first mm-hmm. in this part. This entire world, right? Like the entire globe mm-hmm. of Earth, right? With billions of people all have religions, all of them, mm-hmm. like for the most part, right? You pray to some type of God or some type of idol or some type of spirit or something, right? Mm-hmm. So if the masses, right, when I get saved, meaning like there's very few people, right, that are said to enter the kingdom mm-hmm. of God, bro, these people are like, uh, there's people that are going to be religious. There's people that are like, think about it, like the majority of people mm-hmm. like believe in something. Mm-hmm. Even if you're an atheist, you still believe in something. Yeah, you which believe is, that there's nothing. Exactly. So like, <laughs> Yeah. You, you the point that you believe in something just like Christians believe in something. You get me? And even then to that to that degree, a lot of people won't get saved. You get me? Because at the end of the day, it's true. Like you cannot like like you can tell somebody about who Jesus is, right? And what it is. But mm-hmm. to the experience, it, it's gonna be very difficult because then you have to really dig deep into situations where you can really see, oh, this is where God shines. Yeah. In, 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 which, in which like you said, for a good Christian, it's gonna be in every situation. Exactly. You kind of see God come through. You get All me? Because look, I'm this is the thing too. You could be somebody who who was broke today, right? Today, zero dollars in your bank account, mm-hmm. zero dollars, and you're stressing, and you're like, oh, and what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And you've been praying, and the very next day, you might have five dollars in there, and you can see God. You get what I'm saying? You can have one dollar, and yeah, you can yeah. see God. Like, thank you, God, because I have something. And that's just a monetary thing, because I feel like everybody can relate mm-hmm. to, like, to yo, being finance, like, yeah. like, you know what it is for you to be broke, broke, mm-hmm. and you're like, yo, like, yeah. you're struggling, you get me? So... That's that's really that's really a very good point. Like you can't really explain that. But to answer this question, right? For for me, right? Like for me to answer that question to somebody, like if they're to ask me, look, I don't believe in God, but tell me your experience with Christ, it will be just to tell my story of life mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. You get me? That you've seen Jesus in everything. Exactly. Yeah. It'll, it'll be just, just to talk about like, look, this is where I come from and this is where I am today. Mm-hmm. And I believe that all of this is f- because of the glory of God. Because like me personally, I feel like where I'm at today is 100% because of God. Because I just don't feel like I don't put in enough work. Mm-hmm. Like I don't feel like I've been overworked. I don't feel tired. I don't feel like... I sacrifice a lot of things. I don't feel like I don't given up a mm-hmm. lot of things for me to be where I'm at today. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is like, to me, a blessing. Even though I'm not rich or none of that stuff, you get me? Like, I don't have a lot of yeah. material things. I still feel blessed to be where I'm at. You mm-hmm. get me? And I'll give that to God. So, like, that is, like you said, like, a te- you could testify and give your testimony. But you really can't give that experience. Yeah. You get me? Like, the real, real experience. Because that's something that you actually have to experience yourself. Which is absolutely, and actually, now that I think about it, there's actually like a really perfect comparison because you can describe to somebody how coffee tastes, or like you know, like oh, it tastes like this, that, and the third. But 
your mind can only go so far, especially if you haven't experienced. Like, mm-hmm. if you haven't had, like, coffee, like, taste, like, in your tongue, like, it's going to be very difficult for you to kind of, like, be like, mm-hmm. oh, well, this is yeah. more or less what it's going to taste like. So I kind of see, like, exactly where you pinpoint that. Um, and I would say two things more, right? Okay. The one is the Bible doesn't even teach um, our job is not to save people. We don't save anybody, right? Mm-hmm. It's the finished work of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit. And number two, I've, I've said this always. I think we had a video a couple years ago where I said, I know God is real because I could have never prayed for a life as good as mine. Mm. You know, I, I've always said this. Like, yeah. if, if you gave me like that. a raw design, right? And you're like, Chris, draw your life. I would not have this life and it would suck because this is the best life I could ever ask for. Yeah. Like, and, and I think that that is where I'm like, you know, well, God has been good to me. Yeah. Um, I hope people can see that. And if they can't, I hope they can still see me that I believe this by the way I live this, you yeah. know? Um, like yeah, because I I think that's that's ultimately when we talk about down, you know, we don't obviously this was a very Christian episode, but mm-hmm. um, I want to encourage you to to if you say you're about something, be about that thing, mm-hmm. you know, because the worst thing you can ever do, and I say this all the time, as a Christian, the worst thing you can ever do is play yourself. You know, it's a story in the Bible, and and with this, uh, hopefully, we can wrap it up into something mm-hmm. meaningful. But um, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus says, you know, there's people who will call me Lord, Lord, in the day of, of you know when they're in heaven. And I'm going to tell them, depart from me. I don't know you. And they're going to say, but but we did miracles in your name and we did things in your name. And and, and that always scares me because the, they, the miracles they describe are like bodily miracles. Like They're like, oh, we healed the sick. We did this and we did that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you could do amazing things for God and still not be with God. So I ain't trying to be a I ain't trying to be a person who plays themselves, you know. Get to heaven and find out that all the things I did for Jesus, I was never with Jesus. Yeah, you're you're again playing. Yeah, you're perfect uh, in yeah, the whole time. And so, yeah. uh, you know, whatever you believe in, whatever you affirm, make sure you're playing yourself. Make sure that you can look at yourself in the eye and be like, I, I'm, I'm I abide by this. Yeah. Not that we don't have our lefts and that we don't have our rights. We have our peaks and our falls. All of that's gonna happen. Um, but I I think in my place the comfort is that I don't depend on my own strength. I can rely mm. on God. And I hope you have something you can look forward to. If not, DM us. I have a million moments where I enjoy talking about Jesus. Yeah. But overall, I think it's, I'm down to saying, look, I'm going to commit to who I want to be, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, as a Christian, you're called to be like Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, in your career, be who you want to be. In your dream job, be who you want to be. You know, pursue that thing that's going to make you feel alive. I know what it is for me, and I know what it is for you. Mm-hmm. But I hope you, you find that life that's worth living. Uh, you know, Jesus says, I come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Yeah. We Christians were not meant to 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 just barely get by. We we're meant mm-hmm. to survive or survive. So we were meant to thrive. Yeah. And, and I think people in general, that's what you're meant to do. That's why how the things we chase never fill us up is because we were made for more. Mm-hmm. And I really hope people always get that. Like yeah. out of us, you know. Yeah. Like that we really promote that your life is worth living, your life is your dreams are worth dreaming and and your passions are worth pursuing. But make sure that, you know, you can look at yourself at the end and say, I didn't play myself. I I, I did what I wanted to do. Yes. I, I didn't get too distracted. I didn't get too, too derailed. I didn't get stuck in the momentary fleeting desires. I ran this yeah. race, this life, and I overcame. Because I think that's going to be the end that's going to be worth yeah. it. And I love that you that you put it in that perfect, like, perfect, perfect way. Because that's literally, even, like, you know, we didn't plan on having this conversation. But you think about I'm down. Regard it is even if you don't believe in God or not, but that's what it's about, though. Yeah, I mean, it's about like believing at least in yourself. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Believing in what you're going to yeah. do or try to do. You get I me? Mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, whether you're going to college for a career, you're taking a leap of faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get I me? Mean? Because you don't know if whatever job that you think you're gonna get after is gonna actually pan yeah. out. You get I me? Mean? Yeah. You could go to law school and you don't really know if you're gonna be taken by that mm-hmm. law firm that you want. You yeah. get I me? Mean? Or any law firm at all around you. You get what I'm saying? So. A lot of times, you know, we do these things and we actually, in many cases, even even think about it like this, bro. Let me put it in the most simplest way. Every time you swipe your credit card, you kind of take a leap, leap of, of faith. faith. Yep, yep. Because yep. you're pretty much telling whoever that credit card provider is, yeah, I'm going to pay you back in a little bit. So they're taking and, and a leap of faith on you, yep. right? Being like, okay, we're going to mm-hmm. expect you to pay us back. And you are too because you're spending money that's not even yours. And to you're trusting with. you will be able to pay it back. And that's exactly what you're doing. So every day we're taking leaps of faith no matter what. And, you, and that's how you see God all around you no matter what. Because you said it too. All the things that we talk about in the world, right, of bringing people together, about love, about abundance, all those things are spoken about in the Bible. So that's exactly how you see God in everything in the world anyways. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad that you brought it to that point because... You know, every time that we do this, I want to be able to end on a note of 
this is what I'm down in yeah. about. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? This the, is what the closing we're trying remarks. To, exactly. This is what we're trying to do. And so, you know, I, I don't, I even now, like, you know, like we're saying we're going to try to take I'm down more serious and really try to, like, you know, go for mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want to put oh, so much energy on something that doesn't pan out. And panning out doesn't mean that we get sponsors and we make so much money. It's mm-hmm. about getting those messages of people saying, keep going. Those messages of people saying, bro, don't stop. The messages of people saying, like, you have something here. Yeah. You get me? Like, like you're affecting mm-hmm. my life. You get me? You're making a difference, you know? And you really don't know. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of times, you know, we come on here and we're laughing and we're making jokes and sometimes we're serious. But you don't know, like, the lives that you affect. And people don't even reach out to uh, The people don't even reach out to you at all. Like, yeah. there's people that you affect that they don't mm-hmm. even reach out to you mm-hmm. ever. Like, yeah. they don't send you a DM saying, thank you. There's like, wow. But best believe that whatever you said went with them mm-hmm. and left with them and... That's just how, you know, that's how this life is supposed to go anyways. You get me? Is you use the platforms that you're given. You use the word that God has given mm-hmm. you or the talent that God has given you. And you try to use it for the world. And so I, I think that, you know, that's what we're doing in this case. You get me? We're trying to make the best of what we have yeah. right now, yeah. you know? And so that message is going to be to be right there. Just to say that right there. You get mm-hmm. me? To stay down and to be I'm down because that's what you're going to want for your life. You get yeah. me? You're going to want yeah. better. You're going to want to strive for more. So you have anything else to say? Take the leap of faith. Take the leap of faith. Jump. Thank you guys for watching. I'm down. Till next time. Peace.